That's the reality of it. Where you get the truth, the truth where you get the, the real, real, where you get to see all the things that's going on all around you. And we tell it like it is. Welcome to That's the Reality of It. I'm Maisha. And I'm Claudia. We have another great show. Stay here. We'll be right back. So I switched my car insurance to State Farm. I saved 480 bucks. You know what that is? Yeah. Don't say it. You know what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't. It's a lot of dough. Switch and you could save 480 bucks with State Farm. It's a lot of dough. See if Bryant Jenkins in Reistertown can save you a lot of dough. Get to a better state. State Farm. Welcome back to That's the Reality of It. And I have a special guest. You've seen him before. His name is Larry Durr. And he has a movie that's coming out called Guns and Grams. And I remember I got on you before about why everybody here that does movies here got to be a shoot them up, kill them, bear, all this kind of thing. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. we, you know we, we can do different things, all right? True, true, true. But when I saw the trailer, it, it's, it's pretty dramatic, pretty, pretty, pretty sharp. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. But ne your next movie, I want less guns and and, and that grand. And grand. <laughs> <laughs> grand. <laughs> Do something positive for the black I man here, that. man. Okay. Introduce your guests. Could we have some stars up in here? Okay, we all know JD Williams here. How you doing? Basically in everything. <laughs> I'm trying to get that. Yeah. <laughs> and we also know Hassan Johnson, someone I admire coming up. You know, he's not that old, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. I really admire him, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited that they're here and joined the cast of Guns and Grams. And you guys were also uh, stars in uh, The Wire, correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. So what was your part in The Wire? In The Wire, I played Bodie, uh, which is a mid-level. He started out a low-level dealer, mm -hmm. uh, but mid-level. But like, as anybody who watches The Wire knows now, so many of the characters in The Wire have so many different levels. You know, okay. he was a real person. You know, okay. not, not, not the person he was based off of, but the character right. had actual feelings. So, yeah, but, uh, mm -hmm. but that was my character, Bodie. Okay, and your character? And I played Weed Bay. I was the enforcer from the Avon Barksdale's uh, organization. And uh, that said, just a loyal member. I was about to say, soldier. he was more... Just yeah. evil. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. Evil. I mean, I, I, well, I know, don't feel like he evil. was, but in a yeah. with, with, in a good way, I guess. Yeah. Evil with the good amount of, of good, Intention, with yeah. the right amount of good and, and pure intentions. Definitely. But pure I think, intentions. Yeah. But then force it doesn't sound pure in the yeah, well, you know. Well, 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 you know, just for what I think. I think the loyalty right. aspect is what you're saying. Like, exactly. Like, I'm a soldier, it's a soldier thing. Like, if you give a soldier an order, they'll go out and do it. Yeah, so, so there's yeah. no diplomat for him. A soldier is just straight, you know. Straight to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, take on, I'm on the mission, yeah. which is right for the, the mission and the, yeah. the team. So. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Definitely, man. <laughs> trying to make that one sound uh, good. Yeah, right? you trying to fix it up, <laughs> Yeah. Man. Force it to it. me, like, means I'm shooting everybody. Yeah, we're going to yeah. handle this business. We're going to handle it. That's exactly what it was. Okay, Larry, tell us about your movie. Okay. Okay, the movie, uh, I actually started filming this movie a long time ago. Um, I just never gave up on it, never mm -hmm. gave up on it. Um, uh, what wound up happening was uh, I contacted, uh, you know, J.D. Williams, Hassan Johnson, Omar Gooden, a bunch of people, and said, hey, you know, I'm shooting this independent film. It took me eight years to write the film. I believe that if you guys come on in, you know, it'll be great, and I'll get the star power that I need to, you know, shop this thing to Hollywood. And they came in. They loved the they loved the uh, concept, and you know they trusted me. And out of nowhere, I'm getting contacted by Hollywood for a distribution deal as we speak for theatrical release across the nation. Okay, so how soon you think it's going to be in the theaters? It's definitely going to be in theaters this year. This um, year? Yes. I mean, I'm actually in talks with Hollywood almost every other day, it's to the point of text messaging back and forth, just on a negotiation of how we're going to do it. You know. And who else is in the movie? <clears throat> as of right now, is uh, Omar Gooding, uh, of course, J.D. Williams, Hassan Johnson, Kelly Daniels. Uh, also, we have Calvin Davis. He started the salon, starring mm -hmm. Vivica Fox. Uh, Trey Cheney, who played Poot in HBO's The Wire. Um, we also uh, have rumors right now of uh, Felicia Pearson coming on board as well. So you that's rumors, but that's rumors. Oh, it's, it's not a rumor, but I just not I didn't mean it. Yeah, it's, it's not confirmed. confirmed. You're trying to negotiate that. Negotiate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. negotiating that right now. And though. somebody, so, Moose, right? Yeah, yeah, Young Moose, definitely. Uh, okay. Young Moose, OTM, you know, the... Uh, him and his associates, a lot of his associates are also starring in the film, but Young Moose has a very powerful, very powerful uh, character in this film. Well, you want to love him. Really quickly, one thing, um, like, I'm all for uh, more positive uh, media also, especially when it comes to black people. Yet one thing about Guns and Grams and it, its type, um, especially for young directors on their first time out, I would think that they have to 
speaking the language of mm-hmm. the people that they're trying to get. So mm-hmm. he can get, you know, his audiences or his demographics attention right now with this first one. And then, you know, afterwards he can try to do a love story or a science fiction or whatever it is he wants to do afterwards. But I think this is really him just um, kind of um, establishing. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. establishing mm-hmm. himself to the people that's going to follow him after this. So we would definitely get around. I'm pretty sure he's going to get around to doing more, you know, more positive and uh, uplifting things. Not to say that this <laughs> isn't uplifting yeah, or it doesn't have is- a message. Yeah, it's just it'll be more obviously, you know, not violent like you saying, right, but uh, exactly. but yeah, he's definitely reaching out to to his 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 audience, his demographic, and he's speaking in a language so that they can he can then start representing them even better. Okay, yeah. so what you're saying is that after this one, uh, and depending on how depending on how well it does, exactly. then you're gonna move to. Now I have a screenplay too called Enforce's Hand. Yes. Uh, it's, it's that word it's, again. <laughs> when you said that, I thought about that, right? Mm-hmm. My mind is a real positive. Right, I, I, I understand. Though, right? That's but good. Um, it's it's dealing with uh, similar to the drug thing, right? Uh-huh. But it's uh, some vigilantes that uh, are really working with the police to get the drugs off the street. Mm, that's good. Okay, that's good. But um, so I admire that you've already gotten yours going, man. Thank that's, you. That's sharp. So you say eight years? Eight years. Took me eight years to write it. On the note that he just spoke on, as far as just starting out, you know, Hollywood told me this is how I need to look at it. I have an office in Hollywood now. For the next fifteen years, it's up for me, up to me to put files in there and start doing you know more motion pictures for up to 15 years because that's the contract that I'm uh, signing with the, uh, the Hollywood distribution company. So Can you name the I'm company or no? I don't want to name the company. Okay. You know, but at the same time, you know, I got 15 years to actually do more motion pictures so, you know, I could do drama, love, you know, comedy. Now it's just, now it just <clears> takes <throat> the drugs and the guns and the shooting yeah. out of it. If you do it, make sure it's a different nationality that's doing all but, that. But although <laughs> it's a lot of that, you know, yeah. content and the film, I think it's a show of dedication. Mm-hmm. Gunjan Grams is a show of dedication. Not like you said, he started this project right, right here eight years. People don't understand, like, the dedication and, the you know, the passion you have to really put in this, and making something come to fruition like a film. Filmmaking right. is really another animal right. you know what I'm saying like yeah. I'm talking about filmmaking like real filmmaking like you know good because as an audience you just get the finished product we don't know the blood sweat and the, like the I mean I'm a consumer first right. before I'm an actor businessman right. anything else so you have to understand that and so before you see the finished product it's this blood sweat and tears that we don't understand as consumers that go into this stuff as artists as well right. you know what i'm saying so right. i think that's what this one out the gate is doing for g and g productions larry durr and even you know jd and i you know yeah. coming to us we're still learning and as we go yeah. so it's the dedication and producers on this too producing? exactly yeah, okay so, so the dedication i think that we, that was put into making this film is what people will be able to appreciate <laughs> moving forward and then we'll get to that Positive. The positive. Yeah, yeah. we get to that positive well, and, energy. And, and another thing with me, um, with 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 it being overall, you know, maybe uh, urban stories or violent stories or stories like that, we have we have those a million of those stories to tell. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people need to get a lot of that stuff off their chest and those expressions. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's just like when people ask me, like, do you feel um, pigeonholed or typecast when you're playing a, a, a thug or a gangster? Mm-hmm. But there's different levels of yeah, different people. You know, right. somebody, this, this gangster, yeah, this gangster might have a sense of humor. This one might be really smart. This, yeah, this yeah. one might be a, fa- a family guy. Yeah, you have exactly. different layers <clears throat> of doing things. So yes. when we're telling these stories that, you know, at first, yeah, they might be kind of jarring or they might be a little exactly. disturbing. But as you take them in and you start layering them on top of each other, you see different types of people and the, the different stories being told whether it's the single mom who's the stripper or whether it's the the guy who's trying to get out of the game mm-hmm. or whether it's the guy who's the young kid who's not in the game but wants to be involved in it like a dummy you know so there's a lot of different levels but and perfect example yeah. was a why not to cut you off yeah, it's like exactly. we had 30 principal characters or more and it was all these layers and dimensions, and you got to love these people because of that. It wasn't the one-off. It wasn't the usual one-hour saga, drama series, or a movie that you sit down for two hours and watch. This was something you were able to live with. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing going into this. You want to live with these characters, and you'll be able to appreciate. Although yeah. there's the slight violence. Yeah, like we said, yeah, this the story is there. The, 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 yeah. the, that element is definitely there and present. But like I said, I think it's more so to pull in the audience that we are trying to reach so that we can expand that exactly. story. And this is based on a true story. A lot of this is based on a true story of real life events, almost the entire film. So. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. 
Uh, hopefully you have the trailer. If he doesn't have trailer, that means he didn't give me the trailer. <laughs> but hopefully he'll have the trailer. So when we come back, we're going to see the trailer. And he has also uh, another actor that's going that's in the film. Yes. I know you got Omar is going to be coming up. Definitely. And um, what's the other gentleman that's uh, here right now? Oh, I'm sorry, Kevron Evans. Kevron Young Evans. Moose. And and young Moose. Moose. Young Moose. Young Moose. Okay. All right. So um, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. to Sifu Spencer's Global Wing Chun Kung Fu and Karate Academy, where we teach you traditional Wing Chun Kung Fu, Dao Xuan Po Kung Fu, weapons training, and more. Sign up for self-defense classes for both women and children. Take yoga, too. Get six classes for six weeks for only $69. Have fun, get fit, and learn how to protect yourself. We're located at 9405 Liberty Road in Randallstown, Maryland. What are you waiting for? Come join us today. Okay, welcome back to That's the Reality of It. This segment is called, Does This Make Sense? And I hope you don't kick that mic. So, <laughs> so what we're talking about is, who uses the word MF? If you don't know what I'm talking about, mother, mm, you know, mother this, mother, you know. So, I, you want me to start? Please. Start? <laughs> Look. Black folk use the word MF more than anybody on the planet. Anybody. Every other word. But it was a common called Kings of um, uh, Kings of Comedy. Bernie Mac was saying, y'all don't understand when we use that word, it's a what is it, uh, action, pronoun, noun, and that sort of thing, right? But why? Why do we use it so much? And what's the purpose of it? Rap songs. They feel like they got to put it in the rap song. They feel like they got to put it in everything. I hear young kids walking down the street. Oh, look at that MF. What's the purpose of saying that word? I think in some kids, when they're young, they make them feel like they're older, like they're grown. You know, like I'm a man now. I'm saying these nasty words. Well, you but, but you don't hear other people. I mean, everybody says it. But man, we OD off of it. I don't hear it that often. What? It depends on who you hang out with. It. That's yeah, what I'm, I'm in church. I, I'm saved. I don't talk like that. I don't hear you know, it. You know, but I bet you them people in church you go when you talk like that. What I can say, though, is I am an educator, and I know that people will fill in when they can't find the words to express what they want to say. They fill it in with curse Amen. words. Right. right. Or And then we also live in a, a society where, you know, media is a dumb it down um, you know, urban culture where it's cool to talk like, you know, have certain um, lingo, you know. So um, I think we need our friend Daniel to help us with this topic. <laughs> Daniel probably don't hang out with nobody that says that sort of thing. Like, you say you never heard it? No, you know, and as a matter of fact, I've heard the word mofo. Mofo. Oh, yeah. yeah mofo. Mofos. I have heard that, too. I've heard that. That's about... It's, I hear that a lot That's more the cleaner than, version. Yeah, that's the cleaner version. You, like, you tell me, you don't hear nobody saying the MF word? Not in my arena. Not... I mean, you go to... You, I'm you, all, you, all over the place. You're you know, all over the place. You know right. where I'm... Right. I'm yeah, right. we don't you, use that a lot. Those kids and or, or adults or whatever, where you go at, because I know you you, you, you uh, go to Pennsylvania Avenue a lot, oh, yeah. right? And you're in the home area, and you and you and you, you all like you said all over. So, are we talking about profanity, or are we talking about just that word? See, that see word, now that word. I'm just talking. That's, about that that's word. the piece that's just a little uh, the irony of it all because I hear a lot of profanity. I just don't hear that word a lot. That's, I hear other words a lot more than I hear that. Really, that, and that, my thing is this. Increase your vocabulary. Exactly. Right, Learn right, how right, to right, express right, yourself. Right, right. And so, you know, these youth and the millennials, they have the world at their hand. They can express themselves in so many ways. But they don't and want to. And my house, do. they're Some exploring. Do. They're exploring. You oh, know, you yeah. got the, the poets and the, you know, the mm -hmm. rap artists. And some are really spitting. Mm -hmm. Some really good nurturing, healing. So this whole mofo... 
I don't know what type of rap you be hearing. It was, the, be, clean, the clean, the clean version. Right, right, right. But right. I'll be here. I'm, I'm sitting beside on at the light or at the gas station, and this guy's blasting his radio, and every other word is MF, mother this, mother that, MF, be this, be that. I'm here. I hear it. So all you hear the it time. everywhere. Everywhere. Lights, gas stations, uh, walking, kids walking from school. How old are these kids? Some of them are young. Some of them are no more than about 13 or 14 years old because they hear it other places. They hear it in the rap. They hear it uh, on TV. They, they just hear it. I'm just, and I don't hear it from other nationalities. Why is this Because us? you probably don't know the language that they speak. They're probably saying it in their language. <laughs> I mean, if they're talking English, they're still not saying that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. This um, is a question that doesn't really resonate with me. I don't get it. It matters who you hang around. Well, my children better have, not bring it in my house. You don't have to hang around them. I didn't hang around those people at the gas station or at right. the light. But you hear maybe it. Maybe it's you. What? Hearing it? Yeah, maybe oh. that's where you're resonating. So it just keeps coming to you. No, no. Do you, I, you know, know I heard. Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, no, no. Is that ever care. a part of your no. vocabulary? No, I don't care. When you were little Willie? Nope. You didn't. You never really spun out with that word when you were little Willie. Nope, nope. I don't I care. Don't First, know. I mean, my kids can tell you. I don't. If I say a curse word, it's part of a, a, a comedy thing that I heard, you know. Mm-hmm. And I and I don't even say forgive me for that, right? But my kids don't hear me curse. In comedy shows, I don't even hear them using the words. <laughs> what comedy shows you watch? Mm. <laughs> we ain't talking about the I'm spiritual saying, comedy shows. I'm just saying, mm. <laughs> we ain't talking about the gospel comedy shows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's um, like I don't know, but I mean. If I'm going to go back and watch Did you watch Kings of Comedy? No, but I like Chris Rock. And I like some, you know. You like Chris Rock? Yeah. You ain't heard him say that? Not to that degree, no. But you have That heard... doesn't stick out with his message with me. Oh, okay. So, have you heard Chris Rock? Yeah. You heard him say that word? Yeah. Okay. But a lot? Yeah. Not, like you said, sometimes you look past that and you're looking. You're, you may look past right. it, but you're still saying yeah. it. Yeah. And Chris oh, Rock says maybe it a I'm lot. Just not... I'm tuning in to, to that piece. I'm listening for the other message. And I'm laughing, so... Well, I'm laughing, too. Because <laughs> sometimes when they say it, it makes you laugh. But I don't know why we, as a people, always have to use... And bear in mind, you got to watch King of Come. He tells you why we say it so much. You know, but, you know, it's just... We don't have to. And young people, it ain't going to make you look grown or, 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 or make people think you're grown because you curse or say that word. Mm-hmm. You know, it just makes you look stupid. It just makes you look... Uh, like you don't have any home training, you know, and and you say it around adults as well. But adults can hear you, just so, so it's disrespectful, you know. You don't need to use those words to be look try to look tough, all right? Good be point. On, you know, because yeah. that's what they do. Fourteen years old using that word, mm. and agree. and 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 if you and if you get the meaning of it, you really shouldn't use it. Yeah. If you're a mother effer, right? You know. Get Increase your vocabulary. Yeah, and your mind. Communication is a powerful, powerful t- tool. And using those kind of words make people look down on you. Yeah. And not make you look good. All right. That's my opinion. That's their opinion. She don't hear it. I don't know where she'd be. Where she'd be. She'd be in the middle of Mars somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell us your opinion. Go to the website, odysseyproductionshows.com, and tell me if you ever heard it, you know. I Just never check. said I never heard it. Oh, what you said? I said I don't hear it often. Often. Okay. And you hear Chris Rock say it either, right? He doesn't say it often. Oh, no, you wouldn't do <laughs> often. First you say you hear him saying it. <laughs> yeah. And you're a church girl. I know you Surround don't hear yourself it. with positive people. People that are taking you this way. You not got nothing this to do way. with surrounding yourself. People around you going to say it. Not me. That's what we're trying to say. Oh, he, oh, it depends it? on who you hang around. It depends where you go. So if you're go. at a gas station and, they, and, they, and, they, and they're saying and playing the music. Let it go saying, in one ear and out the other. Well, yeah, it do. But I'm just saying, you know, you still hear it. To because me, it's offensive. Because at the end of the day, you can't control other people. You can't. So I'm why be saying, offended by it? Let's them, I, I, let them do what they do. But, I got other things. I'm resonating here. Right. But it offends me when I hear it. Okay. Well, it you offends might need me. To work on that little one. So his public service announcement is... Use better vocabulary. And especially if you're young, it's not impressive. Right. And when you're old, don't use it around young people because that's where they get it from. Amen. All right? Amen. We're going to wait. We'll be right back. 
For all your pharmacy needs and prescriptions, call Pharmacy Solutions, LLC. The community pharmacy the mayor honored for its commitment in providing the community with affordable prescriptions. Pharmacy Solutions takes your health very personally with patient consultation and a patient assistance program for the uninsured and those with specialty drug needs. To learn more about the program and how to transfer your prescriptions to Pharmacy Solutions, LLC, call them today because they breathe life back into our community. At Liberty Animal Clinic, they know that your pet is a member of the family and you want to make sure they are healthy and receive excellent care. Their top veterinarians and staff will treat them like family and give the best care, medical treatment, and attention you can get anywhere. Liberty Animal Clinic provides these excellent services and they are open six days a week, including giving them a complete physical and office hours are by appointment, so please call. Let your extended family join us! Thank you. Welcome back to That's the Reality of It. My man here, Pastor Page, is going to tell you how, what the whole armor of God means. I have an idea, but talk to us, Pastor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm glad to talk to you about the armor of God, uh, Mr. Allen, because the war is on. The war is on. And there ain't no doubt about it. I'm talking about every city, every town, every country, every school, home, church, whatever. The war is on. And we need the whole arm of God on. We can't half step in this way. You got to go all the way. Just like in music, they play a half note and they play a whole note. They play a quarter note. But this way, you got to play a whole note every time. Okay. That's the only way it's going to work. And that's why I said put on the whole arm of God that you can be able to stand. And if you don't have on the whole arm of God, you, 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 what they say, you're waiting in the battle, you're going to be found wanting. Because you, you're not going to have it. You're, mm-hmm. gonna, you're not going to have what you need. And you really need the Word of God. We're going to go into the Word of God a little bit now and say the war is on. But we're going to go to a, uh, Colossians 3. Colossians 3 and 9 say, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, you got to let that old man go. Mm-hmm. See, you're born with that old man. Right. But you got to let that old man go, and you got to stop lying, and stop using filthy language, and 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 fornicating, and cussing, and partying, and all all your all your good stuff you thought has got to be gone. All the good stuff. All your all your good stuff, you know. All <laughs> what your about good, drinking? No, all your drinking. But lying, not, didn't so, God didn't God drink wine? No, well, Jesus drink no, wine? No, he said that he would drink no more of the fruit of the vine. Okay. Until I drink it into my Father's kingdom. See, people think it's all right to drink wine and drink, but but I, I don't see where that where that's going. What that help you? What that help you getting drunk? Well, I ain't gonna well, get I, drunk. Well, I ain't gonna get drink. drunk. How you know you ain't gonna get drunk? God just uh, know how much uh, I can drink uh, before no, I get drunk. You can't put God in that. That's you. <laughs> that's me. That, that's you. That's you. <laughs> see, a lot of times people want to put things on God. Uh-huh. You doing them yourself, right? And and see, and whenever you start doing it yourself, and then try to put God in, that ain't gonna work. Okay. And say say lie not one to another. Seeing that have put off the old man with his old with his deeds. And see, like I was saying you a while ago, you you, you go to church, you carry them old things with you always. Your party days is over. You, you, you're dancing and, and you're hanging out and women and clubbing and all that. That's over. But many times people don't think, well, then what's wrong with it? Right. Well, see, you gotta you you gotta give up something when you come to the Lord. And the people talk about well, when the Lord, when I found the Lord, no, you didn't find the Lord. The Lord ain't never been lost. Right. You was the one that was lost. And it said, and have put on the new man. That's the that's the thing. Now some can, churches say you can dance. I mean, some to the Lord. Okay. To the, to the dance. A holy dance. Holy dance. That's right. Okay. You don't you don't get out of but people think that's all right though. Right. Well, well, if I used to dance and I was out on the dance floor, how you think I feel? I am a born again Christian. Carrying God's word, I'm not doing the flow boogalooing. Boogaloo. Now, I, 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 I'm talking about, I'm shaking it. Okay. Well, and then you're going to look at the pastor and they look and say, what in the world is he doing? He's supposed to be a, a saved man. He's supposed to be a saved man, but look at him out there on that flow. Boogalooing. Well, and that's, that slow dragon was just as bad. You know how they were, that slow dragon. <laughs> you know, let not one lie to a lie to another, having put off the old man with his deeds. All that old stuff they used to do, you got to let it go. You, is that, you, is that where the, the arm of God comes into place? That, now, see, 
we, we speak about the armor of God. See, back in the days when they used to fight like that, they had them shields and buckles right. on them, you know, and right. helmets and mm -hmm. all that, the shield, you know. But now we we spent, we fight in a spiritual battle. Okay. Praise God. And that's how you, you got to put on the whole armor of God by being born again. Mm -hmm. This is the way you really, really get to it. But if we look over here in... Uh, in 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 Romans twelve and one, we say uh, Romans twelve and one says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, therefore, brethren, twelve and twelve and one, Romans twelve and one. Okay, 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 twelve, eleven, twelve. Okay. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body. Remember, while ago we talked." You got to present, God wants your body. He said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable enough, which is your reasonable service. I'm talking about you, you have to you have to give it all up, Miss mm -hmm. Allen. You can't you can't half step when it comes to serving God. You got to put your whole and it's a job. Right. I'm talking about your whole heart, body, soul, and mind got to be in this thing. That's why the word said word said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. But if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not even in him. Amen. And so, therefore, you can't love God and the world. Right. At the same time, can you get salt water and sweet water out of the same fountain? Nope. Can't do it. And this is what's happening. And be not conformed to this world. And we was born in this world. Mm -hmm. And this is all that we knew. But you got to be born out of this world. See, many times people, Miss Allen, they join the church. You don't join the church. You got to be born in the church. You join clubs and organizations and sororities and all that kind of stuff. But the word said being born again. So I mean of the water and of the spirit. He said love not the world but, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind got to change because we're dealing with a mind thing. And if your mind don't change... You don't change. Amen. And if you're fat, then you're going to be fat now. <laughs> you, hear, you hear what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. That's not going to change. But it said, and then it said, transform by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm talking about you got to accept this thing, Mr. Allen. It's there for you. You can live the life that you want to live just like you want to live it if you want to live it. All right, so when we get back, Part two of this, because we're going to get more into the armor of God and what that actually means and what those parts of the armor means to all saved people. All right, so next week, we're going to talk more about the armor of God and how it can help you help get you to the right Amen. frame of mind and spirit. That's right. All right, so tune in next week. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Monroe Page from the Rose of Sharon Church at 62 Magnet Bridge Road. And whatever you going through today, we got the answer. The answer is in the Word of God. God is a healer because He heals you when you're sick. God will deliver you when you're going through your trials and your tribulations and your ups and downs and you don't know what to do. Just call on God. God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So come out and enjoy Jesus with us. We got the answer is the Word of God. Okay, another great show. Yes. I really had a nice time. You need to stay up, get these resources, set Don't your alarm clock. Don't miss it. Yes, and remember, when God gives you another day, it's another opportunity to do the right thing. Be blessed. And put God first, because through Him, all things are possible.